looks like the, this town of Wisner has about uh, about 11 to 1200 people, the population. Yeah, I got that. I got it. Tornado on his right, very clearly outlined right wow. now on the Doppler scope. This is pretty remarkable stuff. I can't recall ever seeing something like this before. And, I... and then the tornado hits, and clearly something's not right. June 16th, 2014. A day in the record books, and a day that many in northeastern Nebraska won't soon forget. As a tornado outbreak began on the 16th and concluded on the 18th, with 76 tornadoes being confirmed. In this video, we cover one storm in specific, one that would drop 40 of four tornadoes within two hours, and would make history for giving birth to a tornado that would reach a ground speed that propelled it to the number one spot. In this video, we look at the setup, event, and its aftermath. On June 13th, 2014, the SPC noted the possibility of severe weather associated with a potential mesoscale convective system in the northern United States for June 16th through the 18th. However, the predictability of this event was too low for the SPC to designate any areas under a risk of severe weather. The following day, the SPC re released a Day 3 outlook, indicating a slight risk of severe weather activity for the areas around Big Sioux and Missouri rivers before the eventual tornado outbreak. Forecasts remained relatively unchanged on the 15th, though the possibility for significant severe weather was predicted for a large area of northern Iowa and surrounding areas. On June 16th, the SPC once again issued a slight risk for severe weather on the eastern halves of South Dakota, Nebraska, and extending eastward into the Great Lakes region. This was followed shortly after by the day's first severe thunderstorm watch, issued primarily in eastern Nebraska in response to a developing line of supercell thunderstorms. The SPC upgraded some areas previously under a slight risk for severe weather to a moderate risk as a result of continuously increasing moisture content and cape in the atmosphere at this time. June 16th. The morning was hot and sticky, attributed to the high moisture content present. At 2 p.m., the storm this day would known for develops and drops its first tornado at 3.42 p.m. southwest of Stanton. This tornado would destroy several farmsteads, earning an EF4 rating as it slashed a 12-mile path through the countryside before it dissipated at 4.11 p.m. Nobody was injured or killed by this tornado. Another tornado would touch down at 4 p.m. southwest of the small town of Pilger. Twins were now terrorizing the countryside. Sarah, if you can get that to, uh, can we get the, we, let's see if we got this. Where's this right now? Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Postel, uh, on, on top of that uh, storm chaser, uh, Jeffrey Gonzalez, we also had an NWS chat, uh, some homes destroyed uh, just northwest of Stanton uh, earlier. And it looks like the, this town of Wisner has about uh, about 11 to 1,200 people, the population Yeah, I got, of that I got area. it, it's in the screener. And this tornado is coming and right across, I believe that's Highway 275 ben, that uh, they were talking about. And Ben, I see a lot of cars going towards this tornado. It's, I, how can people not know what is going on ahead of them? This new tornado rapidly intensified to an EF4 strength just before it plowed into the center of Pilger, killing one and injuring 20. The town of Pilger lost many buildings, with the silos in the center of town being reduced to piles of debris and grain. An entire house was picked up and slammed back into the ground with a couple inside. All of this inflicted in just under a minute. As the tornado exits Pilger, ground scouring is visible as it heads northeast. At 4.13 p.m., right after the Stanton tornado dissipates, another tornado touches down east of Pilger, taking its place. This tornado would parallel its cousin to the northeast and they would cross paths, inflicting serious damage to several farmsteads. At 4.32 p.m., the East Pilger tornado lifts, but the Pilger tornado remains in this world. As the Pilger tornado ropes out, it suddenly intensifies once more to inflict EF4 damage to another farmstead before roping out again. At this time, a new tornado is developing in front of the Pilger tornado, just south of Wakefield. As the Pilger tornado ropes out, it becomes entrained in the Wakefield tornado's RFD, accelerating the tornado to an estimated 94.6 miles per hour. 4.47 p.m., we fix its fastest ground speed at 94.6 miles per hour, sustained over 5.33 seconds. And just a few minutes later, the Pilger tornado finally lifts. 
This new tornado would also be rated EF4, but it would cause no injuries or fatalities. The storm would f slowly weaken before passing away at 7 p.m., and this outbreak would rage on for two more days, killing and injuring many more. But finally, it was over, and people could see the true destruction. Pilgrim, among many other towns and homes, was devastated. The whole center of Pilgrim was reduced to debris, but the Pilgrim tornado wasn't unique in that regard. Near the end of its life, as it was entrained in the Wakefield Tornado's RFD, it reached a speed of 94.6 miles per hour, almost unfathomable for a tornado. Multi-vortex tornadoes can usually reach that speed if, it's strong, if the tornado is strong enough. Reported the existence of numerous subvortices, tornado strength circulations themselves, developing and orbiting along the periphery of the El Reno tornado. These circulations were tracked in successive radar scans, which revealed several undergoing slingshot accelerations when passing along the south side of the larger tornado, reaching forward motions far greater than ever documented for any tornadic circulations. Two of these circulations, each the size of a conventional tornado, were tracked at motions that reached a hard to believe 78 meters per second, which is about 175 miles per hour. But for that to occur in a single tornado is record-breaking. Saying that, though, the Tri-State Tornado of 1925 is still regarded by many to be the fastest tornado ever recorded. Some people consider the Pilgrim Tornado to actually instead be a satellite tornado instead of its own identity. However, Pico Sank and his field operations team broke this event down and proved that the Pilgrim Tornado was actually the fastest in recorded history. The damage physical and emotional caused by those speeds will not soon be forgotten. I appreciate you watching. Considering dropping a like and subscribing if you enjoyed, because it lets me know I'm doing something right. Goodbye.